Now we're on exercise 10 on page 48, and again we'll go through this in a step-by-step -step, uh, sequential manner. And we'll look at, uh, start with lead 2, and there is definitely ST elevation in lead 2. We definitely have ST elevation in 3. We have elevation in ABF. So uh, we suspect uh, an inferior wall MI for sure. Um, we don't see any um, elevation in uh, V1. There's no elevation in V2, no elevation in V3. Um, V4, it looks a little bit like there's some ST elevation, but uh, we don't see the V3, so it doesn't meet the criteria for two anatomically contiguous leads. Uh, I don't see it in V5, although it looks like it a little bit here, but doesn't doesn't look like it in the other leads. And there's no ST elevation in V6, and uh, there's, in fact, ST depression in 1 and AVL. So this is a patient with acute inferior wall MI. You'll notice that the QRS is a little wideish. It's difficult to tell whether there's a left bundle branch block. I don't think so. There may be a fascicular block here because we don't quite have the rabbit ears criteria. But the patient definitely has an inferior wall, acute inferior wall MI, and we have reciprocal changes here in, in 1 and AVL. And again, this this was a patient of mine who um, I know was having an MI because it was confirmed, and uh, I had signs and symptoms consistent with uh, myocardial infarct. And again, you recall that um, uh, two things: one, if they've got an acute inferior wall MI, we look for ST depression in V1 and V2. I don't see it, um, so there's no evidence of posterior wall involvement. And then we do as a gold standard right-sided precordial leads, which um, I did, but uh, is not on this uh, exercise.